सदाशिवसमारंभा शंकराचार्यमध्यम अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव पादरायण सूत्रभाष्यत वंदे भगवत ओं श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आल करुणाल नमा भगवत्दशंकोकशंक ओं श्री चिन्मयसद्गुरव नम हरि क्षुद्याधिश्चिकित्सता प्रतिदिन भिषौषम भुज्यता स्वाद्वन्न न तो याच्यता विधिवशा प्राप्त न सतुष्यता शीतोष्णादिषह्यता न तो वृथा वाक्यम सुच्चार्यता औदासीन्यमीप्यता जनकृपा नैष्टुर्यमुत्सृज्यता इन दिस फोर्थ वर्स विसा टू वैल्यूज टू पॉइंटर्स क्षुद्याधिश्च चिकित्सता ट्रीट ए डिजीज कॉल्ड हंगर प्रतिदिन वृक्ष औषधम उज्जता एवरीडे eat the food which comes to you to a grahastha anaskad don't demand whatever is come on the table less demands for grahastha very lesser and more lesser demands more happy you are for sanyasi beg only five houses whatever food you collect and then eat it these two instructions two more instructions are there which we will see in this uh, class now the another next one is what swadvannam natu yachyata swadu annam natu yachyata what the sutra beg not beg not or don't beg delicious food swadu swadishta bhojan न याचता सन्यासी के लिए लक्षण है स्वादु अन्नम न न तो याचताम स्वाद्वन्नम न तो याचताम सो डो नॉट बेग डिलीशियस फूड दिज आर ऑल इंस्ट्रक्शंस फॉर ए सन्यासी पर गृहस्था डो नॉट एंटरटेन too many thoughts related to food do not all the time getting bound to the thought of delicious food oh without that the delicious food i cannot survive you know food is not tasty complaints etc so don't depend on too much on that whatever food is available you can eat it without complaints and joy enjoy so this is the instruction given to seekers of truth spiritual seekers the grahastha or any sanyasi or a grahastha don't get caught up with the thought of delicious food there is instruction now see you know it is said the tongue is the first thing which gets activated the moment we are born we take the mother's milk so there the the mouth or tongue gets activated first thing powerful and it is last to do get go away right so this is very powerful especially food tongue is very very powerful indriya number one number tongue also is used for talking so these two things are to be controlled over talking and over eating over talking another instruction will come later on that we will see we will let us focus only on what this thought is swadu annam natu yachata now friends a seeker must be very conscious 
cautious of what? You should be very cautious. Cautious of what? Not getting attached to the food. Not only seekers in the world, there are many, many professions. You cannot do well in those professions if we are, you are, you are, I, or we are attached to the food. So the overindulgence, over the preoccupation of the thought with the food should not be there. For example, you know, army, if you work in army, or if you are working in some places where your regiment is posted in a very good city or town, you may get that also, you may get whatever food is, but especially all those people who are in the war zone or in the uh, what do you call it, the high altitudes, especially in India, Siachen Glacier, or on the, all those people who are protecting the country at the borders. And life is extremely tough there. Suppose they are disturbed by the food thought. They can't do their job. Similarly, another police. Not all the time they get all the tasty food. But sometimes some duties, sometimes some special duties. Bandobas, they say that. Here, there, that, there. And here you have to protect and then the security. Sometimes they may not reach home also. Whatever is available, they eat some tea or snacks or some kind of a thing and they continue to do their duties. That profession. And also, doctors. Not all the doctors, but some doctors are who are very, very busy in their schedule. They may not get the right time, right, right food. Some surgeons, some physicians, or some doctors, those who are on different works of different uh, rounds or even villages they go, or whatever some workers. They are also, you may not get. So many professions are there. Many, many professions are there. Not only this, and then workers also. Labor, you know, the, those who take contract on, they go to different uh, areas to work there. Their house is somewhere in the village and they have to work somewhere and they somewhere they stay. The contractor provides them some shelter and they stay there. Not much any amenities there. And whatever food is given, they just quietly eat. So Swadu Annam Natuya, even for many professions in this world, if you're being attached, attracted towards to attach it to food, you know, we cannot do our work, we cannot focus. And what about spiritual seeker whose mind has to be withdrawn completely from the world and divert that attention towards the Lord for a meditation and self-realization? It's too tough. If mind is leaked out, attach it to food, tasty food, we cannot progress. This is one part of it. And you know, as we saw, what is a food? Food is a medicine. Food is a medicine. So, Bhagavan Shankaracharya gives us that you know you should master your mind. Let the thought of food not occupy your time, your emotions. Mm -hmm. Let it not drag your mind onto the road of sense objects. No complaints as regards to food is considered. There is one Mahatma. Another Mahatma mentioned in, in, in a book about that Mahatma. But Mahatma always cooks his own food. And he doesn't talk and he doesn't ask anybody. So he maintains mauna. 
only during Pavachan time he comes and talks. The rest of the time he just locks himself in his own room. And so he cooks his own food. Ten days. Some place he went for lectures. Since he cooks his own food, before the Ajna begins or talks begin, his disciples or somebody will give an entire list of the items to be kept in the kitchen. Rice, wheat, vegetables, and so all things are stored for 10 days without forgetting anything. Because this Mahatma will not ask anything. And one day, a lecture he was giving. Well, once it happened so, it happened that 10 days of session was over. Later on they found that the salt was not kept in the kitchen. And this Mahatma never asked anything, never informed anybody that there is no salt that you have forgotten. Without any salt, salt he ate food for 10 days. And you know one thing, those who are eating salt every day, it's like a low salt. Suddenly saltless food you cannot taste. He never talked about it. That means that thought absence of salt did not disturb him at all. He was just cool and quiet and joyful. And another thing, example. Samartha Ramdas. I heard this from another uh, Swami. Samartha Ramdas. It seems he was very fond of payasam, kheer. was very fond of the kheer. So one day, his mind, you know, always wanting kheer. So one day he was, he asked, he thought that what is this my mind is attached to Kheer all the time? The thought of Kheer comes. So what he did one day, he bought one uh, big pot of Kheer and he drank stomach full. Stomach full not up to brim. The windpipe also filled. That much he ate. He drank that payasam. And he emptied the pot. And he vomited that in the same pot. Don't think otherwise I am giving this example. It's not so pleasant to hear also. He vomited that in the same pot. And again he drank that. His own vomit. And told the mind, enough now, enough, are you enough? Is it enough now? How much you want? And two, three times he did and then said, Mind said, no, I will not eat kheer again in my life. I will not get attached to it. So that's a, some certain times, you know, we get attached to one particular item of food, a particular thing. We must really come out of it at that attachment also. So that that also doesn't disturb me. No item should disturb me. No food item should disturb me. Think. That is the approach Bhagavan Shankaracharya is wanting in all of us. Absolutely become free. Another thing I'll just tell. During the Vanaparva in Mahabharatam, Arjuna was in heaven. Swarga, he went for five years. And helping uh, Indra in uh, fighting with Nivata Kavachas, there are some evil forces in the creation. So Arjuna went to fight with them. Indra said, you fight with them, complete the assignment, then go back to earth. And in meanwhile, I am also teaching you some dance and music, etc. Plus also weapons for that. So one day, Loma Sarushi went to Swarga. Then Arjuna conversation, Arjuna said, Loma Sarushi, you just go to my brothers and take them to for a pilgrim tour all over the country. Otherwise, you know, they are crying, thinking, sitting in one Karmika Vanam or Dvaita Vanam, they are crying constantly. So, to go there and to give my message and let them all travel. I am just shortening it. So, they went. 
he rishi went and met yudhishthira and said this is what i am coming from swarga immediately all of the mask how is arjuna etc he is fine learning so many things now he has message for you all indra also sent a message to them message is don't sit there and cry remembering arjuna and crying and with the sorrowful minds get up and do tirtha yatra so before tirtha yatra began before tirtha yatra began because there are many brahmanas and also sanyasis were with yudhishthira uh, during that many yatis are there during the yavanavas also so many all followed him not only five as we see in films many one so he addressed all of them we are going on a yatra now so he says those who depend on begging food that is sanyasis and brahmana they want to beg food in during the yatra where can you beg so you stay back in forest and eat some kind of uh, roots and fruits etc and survive so you please don't come with me to get dropped and second he said those who are accustomed to cooked food stay back don't come with with the yatra team cooked food and those who cannot control hunger one day you may not get food at all don't come with me drop and those are attached to sweets and that such kind of items of food don't come with me get dropped like that he removed many of them from the yatra list and he said only those who are willing to come for the yatra with these conditions especially all the instructions most of the instructions are what are given related to food only some yatris also south indians go to north india north indians go to south india and they complain we did not get this we didn't get that we didn't get that oh rice has been did not get curd we did not get and so many complaints so many then they just they go back and then they, the moment they come to delhi or anything plains in haridwar rishikesh from mountain they attack nearest restaurant and try to eat as much as they want you know this is so much of difficulty to control therefore swadu annam natu yachata okay now let us just expand this a bit more now anna means what food food that we take in not only the food that we are talking about the food that we eating food but whatever mind is gaining through sense or parts the craving to enjoy the pleasant sense objects through the sense organs is also so those sense objects grasped by sense organs and dropped in the mind so mind is enjoying those those things that also is called bhog it that also is called swadishta bhojan bhojan here means what not only gross food bhojan means any sense stimuli pleasant sense stimuli that enters into us through eyes ears nose and skin apart from tongue the what is food that is food karna bikaps swadu annam yannatu yachita means what seekers who are attached to love so many comforts then we cannot we mind is filled with always you know so many comforts we want in our yatra in our sadhana also so mind is 
attach it to how to make myself comfortable, comfortable chair, comfortable this, comfortable. Basic things required. You must understand what Shankaracharya is talking about. So where we are caught up in different sense objects, pleasant, bed should be soft or anything, food should be good and the scenery in the before ashram should be very beautiful, scenic beauty and somebody comes and a building, next building comes and blocking the sun and I get suffer, suffocated, frustrated. So this was, there was a beautiful view now. This building has come up and then therefore I cannot see that, this and that. The nature's beauty. We are caught up. Some people are so much, you know, they go to Himalayas and different places and they get attached to different scenic beauties. Oh, that's a beautiful place. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. It, it is beautiful. But you know, the more I praise and more I get excited, it's a kind of attachment. So for a spiritual seeker, we should not hanker after many types of food that enters through our sense organs. That is in the form of various comforts. Do not beg them. Not to yachata. Why? Desire is a bondage. Desire is a bondage. So therefore, it's very clearly hmm. Therefore, when you ask for food, it is dharma. I need food to eat and survive. Asking always, you know, very tasty food. Tasty food. That is not a good sign. If you get it once a while, tasty food, okay. But I don't again repeat the thought. I got this today, gulab jamun. Tomorrow also I hope somebody will give me. So that's how the mind again slowly getting into the worldly objects and gets stuck up there. So this Bhagavan Shankaracharya says don't do it. And then another section is what? Vidhi vashat prapte na santushyatam so, live with contentment. Whatever comes to you from the Ishwara as a prasad in your life, the food that comes to you, vidhi vashad, as per my vidhi, as per my destiny, lalata likitam, it's a fate. Whatever my prarabdha, according to prarabdha, I get some food. Whatever prarabdha brings me, vidhi vashad, praptena, santushyata. So, one should feel contented with what? With, with the whatever you get as ordained by Ishwara, be contented. This is another instruction. Contentment. It is not that, you know, we completely avoid food. That is wrong. You cannot survive. Bhagavan Buddha did and realized and he, ate, he drank kheer and then he said, no, no, Total giving up food is bad. Getting attached to food also is bad. There is a sloka, you know, Natyas Natastu, what you call Yogosti, Nachaikantama Nashnataha, Nachati Swapna Shilasya, Yogo Bhavati Kashana. So one, one who eats more, one who eats never, in a, in a, completely one who doesn't eat, or one who eats more, both cannot become yogis. So moderate. Yukta ahara viharasya. Yukta cheshtasya karmasya. So everything is moderate in eating, in walking, in working, and in sleeping. Moderate, moderate, moderate. For him, for, for, a, for, a, for a one who is very moderate, so that man, his practices will benefit him. That kind of practice, spiritual practice to him becomes the remover or inhalator of all the sorrows. 
It destroys all unnecessary sorrows. So, Seklavi Swadvannam Natu Yachatam Vidhivashat Praptena Santushatam. Vidhivashat means what? You know, Prarabdha Karma. According to Prarabdha, whatever you get, be happy with it. What is Prarabdha? Destiny. What is destiny? Karma Palas being rolled out, being delivered in this life. When Karmapala started delivering the fruits between birth and death, the de our destiny, our Purva karma, if out, out of entire karma, some karma I take out for this life. Ishwara decides and my own vasana. So powerful, strong, some vas life is designed by Ishwara. So certain vasanas are come out, out of the total vasanas, karmas. So some karmas start fructifying in this life between birth and death. So those vasanas, when they started fructifying in this life, giving started giving fruits, that is called prarabdha. Arabdham started. So they started giving fruits. Prarabdha karma. So according to prarabdha, what is that we get? Three things are very important. Janma, Ayu and Bhoga. All these three are the result of destiny. Janma, birth, Ayu, longevity, and Bhoga are experiences that we are supposed to go through in this life are all fixed. So therefore, friends, remember now. Very important. Sannyasis, spiritual seeker, they put their efforts Suppose according to destiny, I am getting headache. Of course, I put my best efforts to go to a doctor and take a tablet and some pill and then get rid of it. That's good. That's fine. That purusharta is required. Self-effort is required. But now what importance is that? Very important sannyasi. What sannyasi does? You know, they don't put their efforts in many of the areas which are not so important for their own spiritual evolution, such as food. So they don't put a lot of efforts and thought and thinking about what to eat, kaha kaenge, kaha, water break, kaha karenge, kaane ka break. The sadhu doesn't matter, it just goes. He needs food. But he doesn't put any efforts on in that. Like Ajagara Vrutti, Ajagara Vrutti, Paitan. It doesn't go move anywhere. He says that whatever comes to me, Rattatare Gurus, you know, whatever comes to me, Yadruchikam, Anaskar, I eat and remain happy. So, in life, Prarabdha delivers some fruit. So, the, let us not put our Purushartha efforts in all those areas which are not so important. They are required, but they are, they are not that important that we need to alter them. Like, you know, food is served, some, somebody served only some uh, one night. Oh, then I'm not happy, then go to get out of that um, uh, place and then go to a hotel or another big, another house or struggle. And then, this extra struggle energy is waste. Because spiritual seeker says, uh, whatever I got uh, today, very happy with it. I'm quite contented, very good. So I'm happy with it. So I cannot complain. I need not complain. They don't put most efforts in there. In some areas, they put effort. Sadhana, in controlling the mind, in, in, in giving training to the mind. All those areas, we must put our efforts. So, vidhivashat praptena santushyatam. So, these spiritual seekers put their efforts only in the related to spiritual matters. Most of the things they don't have to, they are not so important. They are required, but they are not so important to the extent that one should lose their attention. One should invest all their energies and planning in that, those areas. One should understand in your life, in your life, what is what are those areas which are uh, required, of course, and not to put much efforts in that. Let the prarabdha play. I don't mind in it. So this is how you have to understand in your own life, each one of us. So, vidhivashat praptena santushyatam. So, 
So what you meet in life is destiny. How you meet is free will. So according, according to destiny, we get food, clothing, shelter, people, experiences, destiny. So, Vithi brought, change your attitude towards that food and take food without much complaints. Otherwise, what happens, you know, when destiny I come across, I come across a destiny, I am facing the destiny, an unpleasant destiny, instead of quietly going through and exhausting the karma, because then I, I, I call it as unpleasant, I'm, I am reacting to it. Then I try to alter it by putting another desire next to the prarabdha. That I must have this, I must have do this, I should not have this kind of thing. So next time I want, so we plan the desires next to our own ex each experience. So more and more plants, we have seeds, seeds we are putting in the ground. Each seed again will come up a tree and then each tree will have many seeds. Think how we are caught up. So, let the karma come and exhaust. Vidhivashat praptena santushyata. Any kind of experience. It is not worth to spend time in these areas. Self-effort is required only in spiritual matters. I put my self-efforts. In most of the areas of my life, I need not put so, many of, so much of self-effort because it's all destiny. It's okay. There's not a big problem. This clarity is required. Therefore, Bhagavan Shankaracharya says, Vidhi Vashat Praptena. Because he said in the previous instruction, don't beg the, what do you call, delicious food. Then how to survive? Whatever you get as per your destiny. Get all those experiences you get. For all sense organs. Whatever destiny brings, it's okay. Quite be happy, quite contented. I don't have to add desires. Destiny brought, gave me a attached hut. That's okay, fine. Suppose then I desire, I want building, multi-storied building on my name. Then the real struggle and bondage and bahiruvritti, the thoughts will go around into the world, out, turned outside, it goes into the world. And all that, that center, maintaining the center, or spiritual center, all that goes away. This is the another. So, four points are told. The first four pointers in the fourth sloka are related to food. There are general instructions. Some more instructions are given. Four more are there in this sloka. So, we can start in next class. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamadachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Sadgurunath Maharaj Thank you all Hari Om